Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, Miss Wilma Hollis, to the Well Centered Woman podcast. I am absolutely thrilled to have you here with us on today. <laughs> How are you feeling? I am awesome. I am excited. This is a dream come true for me. So Amen. I'm just so happy to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, before we get into it, I just want to start with some preliminary questions and we're going to dive right in. So I just want to know a little bit of your background. All I know is essentially that you're married with three grown daughters. You've been married. You know, I did check you out a little bit. You've been yes. married for at least three decades with yes, each other. Yes. Yes. And so just give us a little background on your personal life and your faith, how you've gotten to this point right now. Okay. Um, I'm married with three children. As you said, I married my prom date, my high school sweetheart. Wow. So, oh um, you know, there's nothing that can replace the history of that us knowing each other's families the way that we do. Um, went off to college, did the whole thing. And um, my mom is responsible, is solely responsible, singularly responsible for my faith. Um, wow. She was a woman of God to the nth degree. And she was a person that everyone gravitated towards her, mm -hmm. whether it was young, old, everyone gravitated toward her. And so um, she is 99.9% .9 responsible for who I am in the natural. Amen. But you built upon that. You definitely have built upon it by your own drawing close to God and everything that you've done, because you know I'm going to get into it because you guys are in for a treat here when I get into that. And so, but you raised these three daughters, you've been married to your high school sweetheart, your mom has planted and built you up and established that firm foundation. But in all of the journey and there's the stories, you know, she's the, the author of Life Speak 101 because you guys heard it in my introduction because there was an introduction. And, mm -hmm. but there's a journey that you had to take. So real quick, let me just read this. And I'm going to ask you some questions. This is coming straight from her book, Life Speak 101. Life Speak, to take a promise from the word of God that you've made your own by meditating on it to the degree that you believe the truth that lies therein more than you believe any contradictory facts that be, can be comprehended by your five senses. And then to declare, speak, and decree that truth and only that truth regarding your circumstances with the unwavering conviction that the truth of your word, your word of God-based declaration will make the unwanted facts of your situation bow and conform to the image of your, your declaration. That is the truth you are speaking. And so when God planted it in your heart mm -hmm. to write Life Speak 101, mm -hmm. what lies and unwanted facts did you have to make bow down and conform to the truth that you needed to life speak over your own mind and your own emotions in the process of writing this book? How did you apply that to pull off this book? So I'm going to tell you real easy. Um, he is the author and the finisher of my faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number one, because I wasn't an author. I wanted to be an author, right. but I wasn't an author. So I had to meditate that Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. So mm -hmm. you know, when you meditate the word, it takes the pressure off of you. Come on now. It puts the pressure on the word. Because the more I meditated, he's the author and the finisher of my faith. The more I meditated that he is the author and the finisher of my faith. The pressure wasn't on me. And so after meditating that verse for so long, how long? Um, because it wasn't just for me, you know, I, I spoke to you about this before. I, I've had some challenges with consistency. So I didn't need him to be just the author. I didn't need him to just write the book through me. I needed to complete it. 
So when you have challenges with getting to the finish line, challenging challenges with finishing, I needed him to be the author. Come on, and yeah. the finisher of my faith. Mm. And so I went into the book knowing that he was writing it. It wasn't me. He was mm-hmm. writing it through me. I literally felt like I was, it, it was being dictated. Wow. As wow. the words, they just started pouring. And I had a little challenge near the, near the end, you know, okay, we got the author part, right? Cause I'm almost finished with the book, but there were some obstacles that came with the completion. Come on, um, speak into that. Tell I mean, the listeners who are listening. Yes. Um, uh, near the end, the coach that I was working with decided that this wasn't the project for her. As we were three weeks from going to print. What? And so, yes. And but because I had been meditating that word, I didn't get upset. It kept my emotions in check. Because he's the author and the finisher of my faith, no matter what happens around me, no matter if the the, the writing coach bails, no matter if the, you know, it, it's God's promises to us are not contingent on any external forces. Say that again for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> she dropped a nugget, so maybe throw shoes you know, today. The promises of God are not based on or contingent on or dependent on any external forces. So Mm -hmm. he's the author and the finisher of my faith. No matter who bails on me, no matter Mm -hmm. what happens, no matter what unexpected, unforeseen, unimagined circumstance occurs, he's still the author and the finisher of my faith. But what I had to do in that moment, because don't get it twisted. I wanted to cry. I wanted yeah, to tell say- me more about that because see women who are in business, we're dealing with coaches. We're hiring people. We're trying to make connections. We're trying to make collaborations. And here you are three weeks yes. from finishing it. And then she bails. She bails. What kind of foolishness is that? Yes. She be- but the beauty, the beauty is that in that moment we had the conversation. What could I do? It wasn't I, mm-hmm. is it okay with you? She was letting me know this is, this is where we are. This is what's going to happen. So I thanked her for the work she had done up to that mm-hmm. point. We were amicable in our um, okay. departure. And when I got off the phone, I wanted to scream. I wanted to, all the emotions were bubbling. Yes. Up. And I, you know, I wanted to go through the why God, why, why did this happen? How could this happen? You said you promised but because that word had been meditated, mm-hmm. literally, I kept saying, he's the author and the finisher of my faith, but he's the author and the finisher of my faith. You're the author and the finisher of my faith. Now it's this author caught me and the off finisher guard. of my book. Come on. Right, now. right, right. And so this caught me off guard, but didn't catch him off guard. So as I was saying this, I started getting instructions. Do this, do this call this person, make this adjustment. And in that Mm -hmm. hearing and doing, because faith without words is Mm -hmm. dead on arrival, in that hearing and doing, he was telling me what to do. And as I kept confessing, you're the author and the finisher of my faith. You're the author and the finisher of my faith. As I kept saying that, he kept saying, do this, do this. I called the next person I called after that phone call was the person who helped me get the book to the finish line. Amen. Amen. There is one thing that you keep saying. You you made your confession and you you were hearing and then you were doing. Tell me more about the hearing. How did that, was it a a loud voice? Was it a nudge? Was it a prompting? What is hearing God as a woman of God, as a faith-based entrepreneur, an author, in that moment, you got bailed on? by your coach. And now you said you felt all the emotions, all your feelings, you felt all the feels, because I definitely would have felt all the feels for sure, oh. right? <laughs> but then you, because you had been meditating, you began to calm down and you began to hear, tell us, because a lot of people are like, how do you hear from God? I want to hear from God for my business. How do I know it's not my own vain imaginations in my mind? 
Right. Well, I tell you in that moment, um, you know, emotions try to take over because that's, that's what emotions try to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but it wasn't, it was a, it was a, it was just a quiet voice. It was a quiet voice. It was do this, make this call. But because I had been meditating the word, as I started to speaking that word, it was like the word was speaking back to me. Mm. See, it's one thing, <laughs> it's one thing to say, I know you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know Tanika. Sure. But do you know me? You have a podcast. So I would know you from your podcast. Sure. Oh, I, yeah. Tanika, the well-centered woman. I know her, but do you know me? See, mm -hmm. in order, in order for me to know you, I have to spend time with you. Come on, in order now. for you to know me, you have to spend time with me. If it's not being reciprocated, see, a lot of times people want to quote scripture mm -hmm. without meditating scripture. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. It, it's the difference between, do you know the scripture? Yeah, I know it. You memorized it. You heard it growing up, whatever. But does that scripture know you? I love that. She's speaking right from the book. She's speaking from Life Speak One on One, you guys. I remember that part of the book, and that is so powerful. Yeah, you know the word, but does the word know you? And see, Christ is the word. He is the word made flesh. Do you really know him? It's more than just reciting scriptures and memorization. It's, it's, it's knowing, having that relationship. It's the and relationship. That it's that it's a heart thing. It's not a head thing. It's a heart thing. And I believe in your case and what you teach it in your in this book is getting it. That meditation is what gets it from our head down to our heart. Oh, my goodness. That's that's the key. Do you know the word? And But does the word oops, know you? I'm dropping my pen here. I love it. I love it. So you came through that. Mm -hmm. And I love how you are saying he's the author and finisher of my faith. And to me, I'm here. He's the author and the finisher of my book. Yes. This is really what it was, right? Yes. Now, when you got to the finish line, tell us more about your, your feelings as you were, you know, coming into getting over the finish line. Because I remember we had a prayer in the FDBL. You were, you had asked, tell me about that moment. You know, uh, at FDBL, <laughs> I, it was in that zone of getting close to the finish line. And I remember asking the group to pray for me, you know, hey, yeah. you guys, I'm almost finished with my book. And, and we were in that particular day, we were praying for each other. So we never, yeah. you know, we didn't know who was going to end up praying. And Tanika, you prayed for me. I will never, I, I will never forget. I don't that. remember what I said. And I'm going to, I'm about to tell you. You prayed for the spirit of completion. And let me tell you something. As I was getting near the end, see, God is so faithful. He knows exactly what you need, when you need it, who he has put it, you know, who he put it in the hands of. He knows how to make divine connections. In that moment, you said the spirit of completion. I didn't tell anybody I'm struggling getting to the end of the book. I just said, you guys, Pray for me. I'm almost at the, and you said, you spoke the spirit of completion over me. <laughs> Amen. See, only God can do that. Only God. But see, when you're confessing his word, you don't have to know the how. Mm. That's you don't have business. to know. It's none of your business. That's none of your business. And I heard one of my mentors from the past when she was referencing a pastor uh, that she was sitting under he was said he had told her when it comes to faith get the how out of here yes get the how out of here yes yes <laughs> and that's know, what you're talking about yes just know it's done he's done it it's it's done because the, the reality is that every promise of God is not mm -hmm. something he's going to do mm -hmm. it is finished it's a finished work so mm -hmm. my book was already written, but I had to have the faith to step into its completion. Oh, come on now. So what does that speak about our businesses? What does that speak about our lives, our marriages, our children, the calling of God, the purposes of God on our life? And even though our emotions are tribulating, break down what you're saying in light of the spectrum, because we're talking about women who are listening on this podcast, 
I want to be that well-centered woman. I want to walk into my purpose, my destiny. I don't want to be some woman that can't keep it together. I need to have it together to do what God called me to do. Yes. But in the midst of that, if it's already finished, then God, don't let my emotions speak to that. Emotions, emotions. Let me tell you what about emotions. Emotions (laughs) are designed to take you off course. Emotions are designed to distract you. Emotions are designed to get you to speak against Mm -hmm. yourself. When your emotions are high and intense, Mm -hmm. it's when, you know, those, oh, I spoke before I thought. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't mean how that, how did that slip out of my mouth? I didn't mean to say that. Those are the kind of things that happen when your emotions are high. And the thing about words, three things, they can't be unheard, words cannot be unsaid, and Mm -hmm. words cannot be unfelt. Oh my goodness. It is important in Mm. the journey that you focus on the promise of God. Yes, the Bible says that no weapon formed against you will prosper. It didn't say the weapon wouldn't form. Mm-hmm. He said the weapon won't prosper because the reality is you need adversity in your life to build your faith the mm-hmm. same way your muscles need resistance to develop. I'll say that again, again, for the people in the back. You know, if, we, if for, for people who want to work out, you know, if you want to build a muscle, it's got to interact with resistance. Mm-hmm. So the adversities of life, that's life's resistance. That's that opportunity to build our faith. Mm, come on now. And so the but, adversities, come on, go ahead. You know, so, so you know, uh, earlier today, we were on a call and, and um, the speaker said that we should count it all joy. Be happy when we face adversity because this is our opportunity to develop our faith, to build endurance. What does that sound like? It sounds like a workout, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Build endurance, exactly. increase our stamina. So when we're on that roller coaster of life, we know we go up, but then we go down. Yeah. When we go down, that's the opportunity to speak the word. To stand. When we go up, that's the opportunity to plant the word in our heart. It's hard Amen. to build a house during a tornado. Oh. Oh my God, it's hard to build your faith when you're in the middle of the trial. You need to be building it up beforehand. And that is a key concept of Life Speak 101. And it's a key concept in this time that we're living in, being an entrepreneur, starting off being an author, trying to build business, trying to build callings and ministries, building our faith during that time, not letting our emotions run the show. And you made a comment, you said emotions are designed to do certain things. I think they're designed as indicators and warnings. We have to be led by the spirit. Those emotions are just feelings. They can be real if we let them. They're more like indicators that something is off. So Mm -hmm. it's our choice, our decision to act upon it. That's where we mess up. But I love what you said. I love what you said. Now, let me think about this. Here's one other thing. Going back to your life speak definition, was there any one particular lie or unwanted fact about your book project that you really had to overcome because you know you said life speak is like you're speaking the truth against an unwanted fact Mm -hmm. or any place in your life but Mm -hmm. in particular your business journey being an author this whole thing coming out here on social media selling books all of this kind of stuff was there any unwanted facts that you're like "Mm." I know you said often to finish your faith but was there any more well you know it it was it, it was the whole thing because anytime you're trying to do something that will bring glory to God the yeah. enemy's going to try to talk you out of it. Mm-hmm. So you got to overcome that. The enemy doesn't want your business to be successful because he's going. you're going to do God things with the money. So yeah. he doesn't want you to prosper. Anytime that anything that you do is going to bring glory to God or help to build the kingdom, he's going to come against it. And so what did I have to do? I had to push through it. I had to, I had to do it scared. I had to do it um, unsure. You know what I mean? Not sure what I'm doing, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because, you know, when the 10 lepers said, hey, Jesus, master, heal us. 
he said, go show yourselves to the priest. Mm. Nothing about their physical condition had changed, but it was as they went. Come on now. So in business and in this, this journey that I'm in, there's still a lot that I don't know. But as I am winting, he's showing up with a Tanika in my life. He's showing up with other people in my life to say, hey, will you do this podcast? Will you, uh, would you be interested in this speaking engagement? It's because as I went, as I am winting, yeah. Come, on, come open, on now. He's opening doors. See, people don't want to went. They people don't. don't, win. <laughs> people don't want, we want to stand still. And I heard someone say, God blesses moving targets and not sitting ducks. Come Miracles on. manifest in motion. We want to sit still, hide out in our corner, and still expect God to move and bless our businesses. Right. And imagine if the lepers had said, what do you mean show ourselves to the priest? You haven't done anything yet. Come on now, as I winting. So the question for those that are listening, are you winting? Yes. Are you moving? Are you moving in, in the midst of uncertainty? Are you moving in this unsure, volatile, we got war going on, Russia and Ukraine, we got inflation, we got these gas prices. Are you just sitting back in fear or are you continuing to move? Which leads me to my next question. I was listening to your recent series on Instagram where your theme was indeed faith in action. And you had a real entitled, whatever he says, do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you remember, I know you know what you were talking about, yes. where you were referencing the Bible story where Jesus turned the water into wine and Jesus really didn't want to do it, but his mom overrode him and said to the servants, whatever he says, do it. And so I want to know, since you've published this book, or in any other particular time in your life, but because I'm focused on, you know, this part of your book, your life about being an entrepreneur and author and everything, I'm kind of coming at that angle. Have there been times where God told you to do something, but you were like, I don't want to do it, whatever he says, do it. <laughs> and how did you life speak to yourself in those moments? Was there a time where you didn't want to do what he said? Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Definitely. Um, And let me tell you something. Don't we love Jesus? Because there have not only have there been times when I didn't want to do it, but I didn't do it. Mm. Can, can we, can we handle this? Can we be transparent here? Because the reality is it's like any other test in life. If you don't do it now. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You're going to be doing it. You're going to pay that price. It's, it's got, you're going to do it, you know, because, um, you know, I always pray this prayer, Lord, barricade the road that goes nowhere. Mm-hmm. I always pray that prayer, prayer, Lord, barricade the road that goes nowhere. And sometimes the road that goes nowhere could be an act of disobedience on my part. Mm. Break that down some more. We need to hear this. You know, barricade, um, that's a prayer point. That's a prayer. Barricade the road that goes nowhere. And and so I prayed that even with the publishing of my book all along, that's in Psalm 119, it's either the message or the amplified version, but it's Psalm 119, Lord barricade the road that goes nowhere. And then David says, because I want to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. See, David said, I don't want to go. What we don't want to do is keep going in circles. We don't want that Mm -hmm. in our lives and our businesses and just, we don't want to do that. But the faithfulness of God is as you keep praying that prayer, he said, now listen, I'm honoring the prayer that you prayed. So when you don't do something that you should have done, it's going to come back around. Mm. The question is, how long is it going to take you to fall in line? Mm -hmm. What happened in those moments? How have some, you know, do you have a full circle moment that you can re- recall where you didn't do what he said and it kind of came back on you and you regretted it and you had to get back in alignment because a lot of us are in that place. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. Um, the wonderful thing, the beauty of parenting yeah. is as you're parenting your children, God is parenting you. Mm. And so some of the same things 
that you say to your children, like how many times am I going to have to tell you to do X, Y, Z? You, you, you know, you know, I, I've said to my children, come on, you better than this. And then I had that moment where I'm saying it to one of my kids, right? And then I go, <laughs> you God said I mean? it to you. Because God is saying, wait a minute. Well, what about I told you to do X, Y, Z? You're yeah. better than that. Mm, and you know, we have to either we're going to pay the pain on the front end, or we're going to pay the pain on the back end. It's like yeah. the pain of the discipline and the pain of obedience or the pain of disobedience and the suffering, the longer suffering that comes when you disobey. I think yeah. obedience, that it has a pain to it. There's a pain mm -hmm. sometimes. There's some type of mm -hmm. sacrifice, some type of a risk involved, something that does not feel good because that's why we're not wanting to do it, mm -hmm. right? It's discomfort, right? So it's the pain of the, the discomfort of obedience in exchange for the pain of when you come to the other side and you still haven't done it. And now there's a whole nother big pain with other consequences and side effects. And God is like, come on, baby. Yes, yes. But oh the beauty God. is the promise, the manifestation of the promise is on the other side of the obedience. Mm. So, mm. you know, once you fall in line and you do what you're supposed to do and then you had that you know aha moment like mm -hmm. oh my goodness lord why didn't i do this Sooner. three weeks ago oh my god but the beauty is he's faithful he's mm -hmm. gracious he is long suffering he's merciful and you know he never gives up on us we mm -hmm. never give up on our children. I would never give up on my children. Never. That's right. Never. And he never gives up on us. Never. What so whatever God. patience we need, he has that for us. Thank God. Thank God I he's so patient and kind. Yeah. And then take us out. And while we're right. making our little excuses and meandering and sabotaging ourselves and doing little stuff yeah. to be avoidant and all of our overwhelm and struggle and excuses. And he's still so kind to us. Mm -hmm. So kind. So here's another question. And it kind of ties. And you know, I got to ask these questions. Go ahead. It always feels great. And it's always good to see the fruit. And we mentioned this last night. We touched on it a little bit last night when we were talking. When you see the fruit of when people are inspired and motivated and encouraged by your videos, by your posts, by your book, and you get that good review and you get that good feedback. However, but as a businesswoman, myself included, we want to see financial fruit as well. So how do you navigate the seasons where it seems like there are weeks and months and you don't get a book sale? There is little financial fruit. That how are you like speaking then? And what would you tell myself and others who are in the situation? God, I'm out here posting. I'm doing a thousand reels. I'm here. I'm there. And, you know, $20 mm -hmm. come through mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. how, how, how do you keep life speaking then? You know, I, I tell you how you do it. You keep, you know, I, this is not, you know, I, I, what came to my mind was you keep on keeping on. You can't be moved by what you see. You can only be moved by what you believe. If he said it, he will do it. It's already done. But you have to act like faith in action acts mm -hmm. like you believe. So you know what? You rejoice as if you sold 100,000 books this month. Mm. That's not too hard for him. What if Tanika the size of your praise determines the size of your sales. Oh, gee. Say I'm that again. On, listen, listen, I'm stepping on my own feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? What, mm -hmm. if, what if that were the case? What if, what if God was to say, you praise me and based on your praise, your praise will determine the amount of sales you get this week, the amount of clients you receive this month. Now you're going to have a $10 praise. Are you going to have a hundred thousand dollar praise? Or are you going to give them a million dollar praise? Cause see, David was a King. And with all that royalty, with all that dignity, he praised 
God until his clothes. He praised God out of his clothes. So is it any wonder that David was a man after God's own heart with all his flaws and all his mistakes and all his mess ups? Look at what God did with his life. Mm -mm. amen i'm just sitting here like oh this is it girl <laughs> y'all y'all hope y'all heard that i would throw my shoe she dropped the mic it. and put it under the table my, the mic has dropped under the table and down <laughs> to the floor you know and that's that's you <laughs> and know, now you got me like let me piece, piece let me get pulled together a million dollar praise right quick come what on what does that bro. look like what does it look like what does that look like mm. and amen. and honestly when the, when this conversation is over, I've got to ponder that because I did not know I was going to say that to you. So what does that look like? What does a what million dollar praise, what does that look like? What does a million dollar praise look like? It looks like consistency. It may not necessarily be like literally singing and worshiping all the time. It could be just this constant abiding, the constant life speaking, Yes, you know, operating in love. Yes, it's, it's literally being there, putting yourself in that million dollar sales mindset in that space and thanking God in that space because it's already done. It's finished. It is finished. Jesus. So is it's living from, that. it's living from the finished place. It's li guess what? Cause Jesus is not going back on the cross. If he had to do that, then the work wouldn't have been finished. It's already completed. So I'm it's praising completed. from the spirit of completion and yes. speaking of completion, even in the area of myself, not just to finish the book, or if you're listening, another project in your business or developing yes. another program or idea, I got to function as, as if it's already finished and praise yes. them from the finished place. Praise them from the finished place. See, I'm praising from the little place that I can see with my eyes. And we can't. I'm praising we, him by looking at my, I'm looking at my bank account and trying to piece together a praise. Come on now, I'm guilty. Facts. And those are facts. So facts, what do we say? That the truth of the word of God will make mm -hmm. the facts bend and bow. Mm -hmm. So if we keep speaking the truth, we keep life speaking, then guess what? The facts, the things that you can see, taste, touch, hear, the things that the uh, 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 experts, the professionals say, mm -hmm. all of that has to bow to the superior truth of the word of God. I love that. And what you just said, all of those things from our five senses, they can all be manipulated and messed with by the enemy. Yes. He can mess, he can make, he can just do all kinds of little stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. to trip us mm -hmm. up so true mm -hmm. so true now let's see now i'm gonna look at some more questions here just to see what 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 um if you can share something in your journey as a wife not just so let's you know we could take off the author and businesswoman hat but just as a mom as a mm -hmm. wife mm -hmm. can you share a critical moment because this is going to help our listeners where you did get in your feelings and where it cost you. And what did you learn about yourself and God as a result? Were you a time where you did get in your feelings and it did have a little impact, but what did you learn about yourself and God? So I will tell you, you know, I have three adult daughters and my middle daughter, I was having a conversation with her recently. And, um, you know, we're talking about marriage and, you know, all of this kind of stuff. And she says, mom, wow. How could you have been married? <laughs> She's talking about, I'm married to her dad, right? So we're having this. She says, mom, how could you guys have been married for 30 some odd years? How, how do you get through the difficult, you know? Mm -hmm. And I said, are you kidding me? I said, so if I speak to you in a way, because I, I, the gift of God is that my girls are not just my girls. They're also my best friends. So I had the opportunity to raise some of my best friends. <laughs> that is so cool. That is so good. And what I said to her was this. I said to her that I'm sure there have been times over three decades when 
and this, I don't know if this is going to be too raw for your Be audience, raw. Come on I now. This is what we want. On. I want a real conversation. Go ahead. There have been Honest. times for both of us, for he and myself, when we probably wanted to, you know, squeeze each other's necks until our fingers touched. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you have those intense moments. But the reality is, and this is what I said to my daughter, is that the commitment to the marriage was stronger than the commitment to the moment. Because mm. the moment is intense. Don't get it twisted. We've had some intense moments. But the overall commitment to the marriage was greater than the commitment to that moment. See, sometimes in marriage, we make a permanent decision based on a temporary situation. And everybody's mad and in their feelings and they want to call it quits and they want to give up and they want to be done and they want to be through and all of that. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. It's okay to need some air. It's okay to need some space. It's okay to keep quiet so that your mouth doesn't say something that can't be unsaid unheard, mm. or unheard. That's okay. But recognize that the commitment to the marriage has to be greater than the commitment to the moment. And that's not to belittle whatever the moment is, because it can be difficult, it can be painful, it can be intense, it can be um, justified, the intensity of the moment. Oh, it, it's not like, oh, that's petty. No, no, it can be legitimate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But either mm. way, the commitment to the marriage has to be greater, stronger, the ultimate goal over the commitment of the moment, whatever the moment is. You know, the microphone is by the door because she's been dropping it <laughs> and I never picked it back up. <laughs> Not only that, <laughs> shoes are flying. So I hope you guys heard this. Did you catch what she said? She's dropping gems and nuggets left and right. We're going to have to bring her back just on relationships. I'm going to have to call you back for relationships. She said her commitment to her marriage was greater than the commitment to the intensity of that moment. Now you can extrapolate that wisdom for your relationships, for your marriage, and for your business. Is my commitment to my purpose? Is my commitment to my calling? Is my commitment to my business greater than my commitment to this one moment where I'm not getting the traction? I'm not getting enough views. Nobody liked my post on Instagram. I'm not making sales. Uh, my coach bailed out on me. My client is not acting right. This, that, and the third. Is my commitment to my call greater than the commitment to the moment? Yes, yes. Yes. Mm. And you know, when it comes to business, you know, it's it, everything, everything in life comes down to a seed. So when you're working your business, when you're working your dream, you have to understand that first you feed your business. First, you feed your dream. You pour into it. You, you just everything, your all goes into that. It's, it's just like a child. When you have a baby, your baby can't do anything. Your baby, your baby mm -hmm. needs you to That's feed right. it, to change it, to take care. I mean, your baby can't do anything. But as you continue to pour into that business, pour into that project, pour into that calling, pour into that ministry, as it grows, as it matures, as you continue to nurture it, at some point, it will be able to pour back into you. Because see, that's why we're building, right? That's why we're writing. That's why we're answering the call. That's why we're working the ministry. We, we want the, the, the goal, the vision is for that business to pour back into you. But we can't mm. be premature. So you wouldn't ask your nine-year-old to pay your mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what we're doing. We start our business and three months later, we're trying to like, where's my 100K? Like, <laughs> where's my G class? Well, 
Did you really work it? Did you feed it? Did you nurture it? Did you nourish it over time? Oh, this is rich. This is so, so good. I ain't trying to keep you all night because I got a few more questions, but I could camp out right here because this is so, so key. But I'm going to start wrapping it up because I realize this, we're, we're coming. We only got about 15 minutes and it'll be an hour. But so here's my, I got two more questions and then we're going to wrap it up with where our listeners can find you at online. So if you could go back and give 18 year old Wilma one piece of advice, what would it be? <laughs> Don't worry, he's faithful. Don't worry, he's faithful. Elaborate. Um, uh, my mother. When was you were saying, eighteen years old, you were eighteen years old. This is the advice you would give eighteen-year-old little Wilma: the baby mm-hmm, face, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. bright-eyed, bushy tail. Don't worry, he's faithful. Um, and and I say that because my mother was a single parent. Uh, for for the majority of my growing up, my parents divorced when when I was five, and for me that established some trust issues, trust issues. Now I have a wonderful relationship with my father. Um, he I love him. He's awesome. That's a whole nother Bible class for another day. How God did that, but um, there were trust issues as a result of that, and so. Um, always hesitant, always, um, I was always hesitant and very cautious um, during those years, just very cautious. And, and, I, and I'd say, don't worry, he's faithful because God always keeps his word. He, mm-hmm. he always protects, he always keeps his promises and you don't, I would tell myself that you don't have to protect yourself. He's got you. Mm. Wow. You don't have to protect yourself. He's got you. He's got you. Because we can get in a lot of works of the flesh and create a lot of chaos when we try to fight our own battles and protect mm-hmm. ourselves. Because that's really saying, God, I don't trust that you're big enough to protect me. That's but right. I'm going to take matters into my own hands. Mm-hmm. Control, it brings on control manipulation, trying to force things, trying to control things because you're scared and you're in fear. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need to bring you back Mm -hmm. to do another interview. (laughs) We can go go into other stuff. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh my God. So the advice that you would give your 18 year old self is don't worry, trust, and that to not protect yourself. You don't but have trust, to protect yourself. take yourself. That's not throwing caution to the wind. That's not like not using right. wisdom and discernment. That's a, speaking to not putting up these walls and trying to control circumstances because you yeah. don't trust God. That's what we're talking about, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Mm. Everybody is not- Out to get you. Out to get you. Everybody's not out to get you, you know? Mm-hmm. That's but a big what, deal. That's a big deal in business out here in these Instagram streets. That is a big deal. And- Culturally, if I can say that, we're we're taught culturally to kind of have walls up. We're taught yeah. to keep, you know, <laughs> a, a, a saying in my family was keep your head on a swivel. You, you yeah. gotta look, you gotta be All able to look forwards, is. backwards. You need eyes on the side. I mean, you in just in the back of your head, you need to in be the back of your head. All of yeah. You get, you know. And while that's not a bad idea in terms of walking the streets of New York, (laughs) you know, being aware of your surroundings emotionally, Mm. that's a different, there's a different story there. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. And this is my last question. And then I'm going to want you to share with our listeners how they can reach you, whatever projects, whatever other things you have going on in addition to Life Speak 101, which I do have the book here. I don't want to make noise on my little Zoom, but here's the book for when this goes on YouTube. You guys on YouTube, you can see it. Those on the podcast will not be able to see it, but at any rate, if you're listening, definitely. But she will give information 
Um, and I have it in the show notes as well, all of her links and everything, but I want to hear her to say it and share with, with the listeners. So this is the last question. Mm -hmm. In addition to life speaking and prayer, what practices and habits do you have that help keep you centered, settled, and sane in your journey as a woman of faith? In addition to life speaking, in addition to prayer, what other practical or other wisdom that you have that keeps you centered, that keeps you settled, that keeps you sane in this entrepreneurial journey? off the journey, just being a woman of faith and purpose? Well, I have a beautiful, I wish I, I had brought it to, to the table with me. I have a beautiful devotion that's called Prayers on Fire. I recommend it highly. It's called Prayers on Fire, 300, 365 Days of Prayers from the Passion Translation Bible. Wow. It is absolutely, um, it takes the word, and it's, it on, it's only one verse a day, but the beautiful thing is to read a scripture that you are so, oh, so familiar with because you've been hearing it and reading it all your life in the King James Version, mm -hmm. and then to hear it and read it afresh. Mm. in the passion translation I love the passion translation it just takes you to another level it gives you a deeper understanding it um it just peels back another layer for me mm. and even mm. though it could be a very easy very you know familiar passage to read it in that translation you know I can think about a particular scripture all day and just like wow that's so good. I never thought That's of it so that good. way. I never saw it that way, you know? Mm -hmm. So that to me is, and, and you know, I know that you said besides life speaking, but I, I will tell you with regard to life speaking, I make declarations over myself and over my family and over my children and over projects all the time, all mm. day. And it's not something like, oh, let me remember to do this. No, I'm going to say that uh, I owe no man anything but love. I'm going to say that sometime during the course of the day. I'm going to declare that over myself. I owe no man anything but love. I'm going to say that. If, if something's coming up, I'm going to say, Lord, barricade the road that goes nowhere. Okay, here we go. We're going to do this. You know, I'm going to say that he always guides my steps and makes them sure. I'm going to say I'm living in the overflow. I'm going to say that every day. So, so with regard to that, mm -hmm. um, we so often talk ourselves out of things. Mm. Why aren't we speaking ourselves into things? Dropping the mic again. <laughs> we, we're so often talking ourselves out of things. How about talking ourselves into things? It works. It, it works. It works both ways. It works both ways. Somehow we've been convinced that it only works one way. Mm. You've spent so much time uh, focusing on the world system and assimilating that, you know, we think, oh, well, let me, you know, talk myself out of something. No, why don't you talk yourself into something? Because mm -hmm. see, we know how to talk ourselves into some mess sometimes, don't we? Well, that's, that's another Bible class for another day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So what I'm hearing is back to the original question, you know, your life speaking and you have, you, you have your prayer life, but this declaration has become so interwoven into your daily conversation. That's what I'm hearing from you. I'm hearing that it's not just, I'm speaking like one time you've been doing it for so long that it's literally the fabric of who you are and what you like your life, your whole soul, like all throughout the day, your life speakers, your language, just what yes. you do. And you know, let me and so tell it's you like what. not even a daily practice. Like I'm getting together to meditate for five minutes yeah. for you. It's all interwoven into your whole lifestyle. Exactly. You have life speak lifestyle. This is why the, the mm. importance of life speaking, sometimes for Christians, you know, we become believers and it's wonderful, right? But imagine moving to Spain and never learning Spanish. Mm. What, what happens? You don't, you, you, you forfeit your rights and privileges because you don't know the language. 
there are things you're leaving on the table. You're being cheated out of stuff because you don't really know what's being said. You don't know what you should say to get what you want. And life speaking is the language of the kingdom of God. So you've left the world system, you've moved into the kingdom of God, but you never changed your language. What are you leaving on the table? Because you don't know how to call for it. You don't know how to speak it out. You don't know how to draw it in because you're not speaking the language. I can't be in the kingdom of God and say, my feet are killing me. That's not life speaking. That's not kingdom language. We can say what we have, or we can have what we say. Choose. I'm grinning like a chess cat for those of you who are listening on the podcast. <laughs> I'm grinning like a chess cat because she's dropping mics again, you guys. What are you leaving on the table? Because you don't know the language of the kingdom. Right. What are you leaving on the table? You, you've come into the, to, to the kingdom. You're a believer. And now you have not even taken the time to learn the language of the kingdom. You're still speaking the deaf, deaf language of the world and you're bringing it into the kingdom and wondering why you're not getting the results. Yeah. That's a whole nother podcast, my God. Is it, it is, you know, with the gas prices, everybody's putting little funny things on TikTok and Instagram about the gas prices are so high. But instead of talking about how high the gas prices are. How about my God shall supply all my all needs my according needs. to his riches and glory. It doesn't matter how high the gas prices go. Now we're not calling for higher gas prices, but what we're saying is that my God supplies all my needs, no matter how high the gas, the gas prices, prices go. go. Mm -hmm. Amen. What are we going to do? What we got to choose? We've come into the kingdom. Why don't we choose the language? Come on now. Life Speak 101, Miss Wilma Hollis. When will you learn the language of the kingdom and start speaking life over your home, your soul, your spirit, your business, your ministry, your projects, your God ideas? Come on. So Wilma, this is, this is a rich discussion and I'm going to really have a hard time deciding the sound bites. <laughs> to you as I put this on social media because you were just dropping some stuff in here so this is really really good and I'm so pleased because you said I'm sure I pulled stuff out of you that you didn't plan on saying <laughs> <laughs> yes yes so tell us more about you and where people can find you online and what you have going on and just all your information Oh, um, well, first of all, let me just say what an honor, what a privilege, what a dream come true. This has been a long oh. time coming with me and you, you know that. Um, uh, okay, so on Instagram, I'm Wilma Hollis Life Speak. On TikTok, I'm Wilma Hollis Life Speak. And on, um, I have a, a YouTube channel, it's Life Speak TV. And my website is wilmahollis.com. And I, I must say on the website also, you know, we're talking about life speaking as adults, but imagine if you learned how to life speak as a child, mm. imagine not having to grow up and unlearn and mm. then learn. So I have um, media for children on my website called Life Speak for Kids. You have to go to wilmahollis.com, but it teaches Bible verses, scriptures for children so that they understand life speaking as children and they don't have to go through all the mess we had to go through because we didn't know what we were doing. Mm, because we picked up the language of our family of origin and the culture and the world. Yes. And now when we come into the kingdom, now we got to undo all of that. So I love that life speak for children. So you guys, you've heard it. This has been a wonderful conversation. I am very pleased. You've dropped so many gems. I got to go back and listen. You know, I got to go back and listen and pick this up for myself because I'm up here to, you know, I got a whole little page of notes here, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's been my pleasure. It's been a delight and I've been absolutely just delighted to have you here, Wilma, just a blessing, just a complete blessing. Well, it's been my honor. Thank you so much for the privilege, the privilege, and the privilege and the opportunity, you know, Tanika, you just, girl, you got my heart. 
Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, blessings and abundance, you guys. Uh, this concludes our interview with Miss Wilma Hollis. Definitely connect with her. The link to all of her information is in the show notes. Get ready, leave a review, and definitely follow her and connect with her. So stay tuned, and I'll talk to you soon.